What do you want in this body? Everything like what? Speak. In the name of Jesus. Speak now. Speak now. You want his marriage? You want what else? His life? What else? Speak. In the mighty name of Jesus. You want his children? What else? So is this I guess this is supposed to be like the demonic spirit that's inside of Joel and they're trying to pull this demonic energy out almost like a possession or something like that. I'm I'm throwing off the whole testimony had me, but this part throwing me off, Joel. We're gonna have to make sense of this one here. So it sounds like that this demon spirit is after his wife, after his kids, his marriage, and you know, he's revealing that here, and then the point is to get that out of Joel. So he can overcome it. What else? What else? No. Fire! 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 Hey, you know when you just want to dream big? You can't let nobody hold you down, man. Don't let nobody stop you from what you're trying what to do. What up, dude, God Gang? It's your boy, Kelvin J, man. I'm tapped in. Came across another video by my man, Joel, here. And I just wanted to touch on it. I started watching just a little bit and I was like, yeah, okay, this video looked like it's going to be kind of interesting. This one dives in a little bit deeper to his story and his testimony. So I want to share this with y'all. Like I said, Droll is from Detroit, just like myself. He got into Gold Digger videos. He became one of the biggest Gold Digger channels around. So anyone who's in the Gold Digger game knows Joel. Joel is like the GOAT, right? But he's been convicted. God has been pulling on his heart. You know what I'm saying? He's been convicted and now he just couldn't, he couldn't do the videos no more. He just, he, he needed, he wanted to post. He wanted to keep doing these lustful gold digger videos, but something was just stopping him. Why was that? I can't even shoot no more videos because I'm trying to shoot. My body keeps telling me no. Like I, I'm a grinder. I like grinding, right? So I'm literally like, I'm about to shoot about 40 videos. Matter of fact, I'm triple uploading. I haven't uploaded in a month. The reason why I wasn't uploading for y'all, I couldn't. I go by Joel TV, but my real name is Joel Asher. And that I'm boy on fire Michigan. for God right Detroit. now. Detroit, do you have any siblings? Yeah, I'm actually the youngest of eight. Wow. So, yeah, I'm the youngest sitting at 30 years old. Like you, you know you going hard for God when you when you want to when you when you you want to do something worldly. You want to do something that is not of God. But something's just stopping you. But it, it's never felt that way before. It's never felt. You can just get up and you can go get that abortion like it's nothing. But all of a sudden now it's like, ah, oh, you just feel disgusted. Oh, I just can't do it. That's the power of God. Like the things that I've been overcoming in life, you know, God can, if you seek his, his energy, his, his, his power and you continue to pray, God will push it through your flesh to cause disgust. You know, I pray to be disgusted by sin. You know, I can't, I pray to not want it, to be, ugh, ugh, get it, you know what I mean? Because the flesh wants it. So I pray to, to not want it, to not crave it. And God has done that for me. As, as time goes on, different things become disgusting. Like things that I used to just enjoy to partake in having fun. Now it's just like, ugh, ugh I don't even want it. You know, like candy when you grow up and all, you just don't want candy anymore. You know what I'm saying? Big family. Tell us, how old were you when you gave your life to Jesus? I actually gave my life to Jesus when I was actually about six. Mm. Actually, my dad used to do Bible school at home every Saturday. But of course, you know, you backslide as you get older. So I would say as of right now, I just gave my life to Jesus about a week and a half ago. Wow. Talk about backsliding. How was that? Yeah, I promise you I did not wear this white t-shirt because Joe got a white t-shirt on. I just realized that we both sitting here with white tees on from Detroit. I don't know the odds, but <laughs> I thought that was funny. Woo. Backsliding. Well, I used to believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. Yeah. Until I found out that was a lie. So I used to just, yep. you know, do um, a prayer. And just be like, oh, good, God got to forgive me. I used to play a mind game with God and thought like, all right, if I sin, all I got to do is just say, Lord, would you please forgive me? And that's yeah. what I was literally doing. So, yeah, that, that was crazy. That I was and people get caught in that. People get caught in it. They think that's normal to just do that their whole life. To just, every time you just, oh, I'm about to go sin. And God, do you forgive me? 
you know, forgiving God just constantly comes constantly. You got to work to overcome that. You got to work to get that to an ending. You got to captivate those thoughts. The goal is to end that suffering and pain, not to just keep doing it for the whole time you're living here on earth. I was living like that. So I know you're a YouTuber and um, I want you to walk with us in that journey. Uh, what inspired you to start YouTube? Wow, let's take it far back. What inspired me to do YouTube? All right, so like I said, I'm a, um, I was a poor kid from Detroit. You know, I used, my mom, um, she was living off food stamps, and I used to get one pair of shoes, and I had to make that last for two two seasons of uh, uh, two years of school. So I knew that my mom really couldn't afford clothes. So like, I had a friend named Chris Ells, and, um, you know, he was married at the time with Queen Naja. A lot of y'all know who that is. So um, they was doing YouTube, and they blew up in like immediately in one week. So we went to church together and I'm praying to God. I mean, they didn't see me crying. I put my head down. And I'm praying to God like, God, I really want to take care of my family. It was really my family that drove, that driven me to do YouTube. And um, I prayed to God, I said, Lord, I don't want to work a nine to five. I'll do anything. Just bless me with YouTube. I seen them blowing up. So that just put a passion in me to like, man, I'm not quitting. I've never really been a quitter. So I did it, prayed. And from there, I did YouTube. Wow. Wow, that's good. That's that's really good. So I know YouTube has been one of the biggest, uh, biggest platform that you... Joe, hit me up, bro. I got, we got to sit down and talk, bro. Next time you're in the city, you know what I'm saying? If I got to come to Texas, but we got to talk, man. We got to talk business, man. I feel like me and you, we can come together and make some things happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just talking about here in the areas, but just around the world. You know what I'm saying? With your movement and what I got going on, God Gang, we can come together and reach some souls, man. You created for yourself. Yes, yes. So tell us a little bit more. Um, I know you mentioned uh, you being saved and backslide and come from a poor background, right? Uh, now you started YouTube, created income for yourself, and YouTube started booming for you. So how do you feel knowing that, okay, I accomplished something at that moment? Man, man, oh man. So I blew up with my wife. So I made it to about like 5K. And at this time I met my wife, which is Lauren, I know Lauren, right? So I met my wife, she didn't even want to do YouTube. So I forced her to do YouTube. Like, look, the couple stuff popping, we in love, let's do it. Let's change our life, we both poor. We, you know, she's more in the suburb side. And I was born in the hood in an urban city, right? So I, I got kicked out. You know, my mama couldn't control me. And that's how I met Lauren. Um, I moved with my sister. It was called Taylor, Michigan. That's the uh, country and suburb side, right? So I meet her. You know, my boy, you, I'm my boy was living too. large out in Taylor compared you know, to Detroit. We did it. We popped off in one month. So we started. Yeah, we popped off in one month. Me wow. and my wife. And uh, we started doing YouTube. And the money was rolling. I'm talking about. I'm used to working a nine to five, getting four hundred dollars a week. I'm For y'all that don't know how much money you can make on YouTube, do some research. I've been trying to tell people about YouTube for years. I've had multiple ideas over the years. Most of my ideas with YouTube have been group ideas. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a creator. I like to create amazing content, which takes teamwork to make the dream work. But it's hard to get people on board, man. People be sleeping on YouTube, man, until they meet someone up close and personal and they see that them checks be looking insane. You're like, wow, you know, Instagram, I mean, uh, ad revenue, they want to pay me all this money just so I can upload this little 10, 12 minute video. And people out here working at the oil rig making way less than that. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that YouTube. I'm talking about five thousand in one month that was good we young mind you i'm 30 right now so we're young i'm 22 and think she's 19. Ten thousand a month what are we going to do with that with no kids <laughs> so you know um i was definitely happy it was an achievement because i didn't graduate high school and she didn't graduate high school so we had so much in common so tell us a little bit about lauren who's lauren to you i know you mentioned your wife but we want to know about lauren lauren is she kind of, she got the same story as me. You know, we both was kind of like out there in the streets. She got put out, I got put out. We didn't like school. It was kind of like we was in the world. So when we met, 
And we talked about that, and that made us grow closer because we were so equal. You know, like, she done stuff that I didn't judge her off of. And I'm like, wow, I've done stuff that I thought was bad, and she didn't judge me. And it's like, well, you cute. And she thought I was handsome, you know, after she turned me down twice, no, three times in a row. And then I, I finally pulled her. But we we just connected on that level. I was like, dang, I didn't like school. I didn't like being around people. Yeah, I only did sports, you know. And after that, I didn't want to be around nobody. So we just linked with conversations that was equal, you know, and we popped off. And, you know, from there, we had a close bond. Oh, you said earlier you didn't lose your father. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, how, how did you feel after that? Losing you know, my father? Yeah, knowing that your father is not there. And uh, I can smile about it now. But at that moment, when I lost my father and sent him in that state, he had stage four cancer. He lost over 110 pounds. Man, that was I was crying every day. I was crying because I put, um, since I didn't graduate school, I always told myself, the money is going to solve all the problems. I'm going to retire my dad one day. I'm going to retire my mom one day. I didn't get a chance to retire my dad. I paid his tickets off. I gave him money here and there, but I didn't live up to that goal to like, hey, dad, here go $200,000. You proud of me? So I had that in my head. Like my dad didn't love me unless that, that that's what I put in my own head. So when I lost my dad, it was kind of like, that was a wake up moment to like, yeah, you know, my dad was a Christian. Let me get right with God. Wow. Yeah. Let me get my life in order and get right with God because not only would he like that, I want to see him in heaven. Wow. Yeah. So that hurt me a lot. So your dad was an inspiration to you. Yeah, he was definitely an inspiration. Wow. So how did you find Generation Rise Up? <laughs> Um, I found generational rise, rise up. If y'all don't know, I'm sitting in the church right now. This is where I'm at right now. I've been here <laughs> every day. Um, I found generational rise up because, man, I was stressed out. I was in the car crying. If y'all don't even know right now, man, Lauren was going through a divorce right now. So all this hit at once. My dad died. Um, I'm going through a breakup. Um, you know, I'm facing charges that I can't even talk about right now because I'm still facing it, but I'm not worried about that right now. Um, I lost every supercar. My account has been on zero every single month. And I'm talking about, I've been making thousands of dollars and I'm very, I'm very independent when it comes to money. I don't like spending too much, but supernaturally I felt like something just kept going down. Yeah. So I'm sitting in the car. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sleeping in the car because Lauren told me don't come in the house, right? I couldn't even get in the house. She's done with me. I've done so much stuff over the years. And mind you, I got delivered twice already. So I got delivered. I felt good. You know, I felt like the weight was off, you know, and I'm like, you know what? This is the website that Lauren found. It was, I, I, uh, uh, what's his name? Sal Ezra uh, Salvador? Isaiah. Isaiah. It was Isaiah Salvador um, deliverance page where if you type it up, you'll find people closest to you that can deliver you, set it up. So I remember Lauren being on there to set up a deliverance. So I know I have to be God because I don't even know how I remember that. So um, <laughs> I'm sitting in the car, tears down my face, thinking about all the regrets. Like, dang, why did I choose this direction? So I finally get on the website and it's people everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, let's see what's close to me in Dallas. I call about two or three people. I think one person picked up but they didn't send me a text message. So I came across, you know, Generational Rise Up. Um, I called them, I didn't know at the time. And, you know, the pastor that's talking to me right now, interviewing me right now, Pastor Glody, um, he picked up at 10 or 11 o'clock. I know it was pitch dark, it was nighttime. He picked up, I'm crying. I don't want him to know I'm crying. I'm talking to him like, yeah, I'm, you know, my marriage ain't working out, my dad died. I'm kind of like telling him like, look, I need a deliverance. And, you know, I told him my wife needed deliverance, too, because we both have been just living our life. But I'm speaking for her because I'm, I'm not even I'm not even with her at the time. Right. Yeah. So I know I was going to show up. So I'm like, you know, he told us you told us, come on in. You sent me a text message right then and there and you prayed for me. Yeah. So he told me to come in Thursday. And at that time, I think it was what? Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. And I was waiting the whole time. I'm going. I'm going. So that's how that's how I found that's how I found Generation Rise Up and that's how I got delivered for the third time. Wow, wow.
I know whenever you came on Thursday and we prayed for you, how did you feel? Oh, man. When y'all prayed for me, um, one, I wasn't nervous. When I first got delivered, I was nervous because I knew my life was already bad and I was hurting my wife. So at this time, it was kind of like, look, I'm already a big failure. I'm already losing this and I can't even shoot no more videos because when I try to shoot, my body keeps telling me no. Like, I I'm a grinder. I like grinding, right? So I'm literally... I'm just say, man, I know this sounds crazy, but I turn around every time I get ready to film them something and my body tells me, no, maybe it's God. So I'm a star retired until further notice. Sorry for wasting your time. You do to make God proud. God is never ashamed by you. He only love and you didn't waste my time. I appreciate you expressing this to me. But just check back up with me if you want to link up and talk more about the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Literally, like, I'm about to shoot about 40 videos. Matter of fact, I'm triple uploading. I haven't uploaded in a month. The reason why I wasn't uploading for y'all, I couldn't. My body would literally just tell me something, and I'd be like, nope. An excuse would pop up. So um, when y'all prayed for me, I was already letting everything out. I was submitting everything to God. I want to change, you know? I'm like, look, this ain't how my life supposed to be. Skip the money. Skip every day, you know. I, I won't want to get delivered, so I didn't. I felt good when y'all prayed for me. I feel good, man. Wow, what is Jesus doing in your life now after deliverance? Who are you? What do you want in this body? Speak now. What do you want in this body? What you want? What everything? Everything. What? This body? Now, this is interesting, you know. I'm, I'm I've never experienced this type of thing before, but you know, I see this going on in churches. I'm not too fond of it, you know what I mean? A lot of people may call it fake or, you know, this and the other. I, I'm not too of a fan of it. I haven't experienced anything like this myself. I mean, he's on the floor shaking and, like, he's in a trance, like he's uh, hypnotized or something. If that's real, I don't know. I can't speak on that. But my connection, my, my experience with God, you know, how God revealed things, how God reaches us, hasn't been in this manner. So let me know what y'all think. If y'all experience some stuff like this and what y'all feel, if y'all feel like it's kind of fake, extra, if y'all feel like it's real, spiritual, connected, let me know what y'all think. What do you want in this body? Everything. Everything like what? Speak. In the name of Jesus. Speak now. Speak now. You want his marriage? You want, what else? His life? What else? Speak. In the mighty name of Jesus, you want his children? What else? So is this? I guess this is supposed to be like the demonic spirit that's inside of Joel, and they're trying to pull this demonic energy out, almost like a possession or something like that. I'm, I'm throwing off the whole testimony had me, but this part throwing me off, Joel. We're gonna have to make sense of this one here. So it sounds like that this demon spirit is after his wife, after his kids, his marriage. And, you know, he's revealing that here. And then the point is to get that out of Joel so he can overcome it. What else? What else? No. Fire! 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 Oh, what is Jesus doing in my life? So basically, he's humbled me, you know, in a way to where I don't have to look for material stuff to make me happy. Like, I can go buy a car. Yeah, I can go buy jewelry. And then that would make me go with a girl because I look good. And, you know, so Jesus has humbled me to really focus in on it's more to life than the material stuff. I can go to him to fill that void, which I never did. You yeah. Know? I would pray. And then I sneak and pray in, be like, yeah, God, um, I do want to do this. I do want this career. You know, I, I, I sneak a little prayer and it was never focused on him. It was always focused. For me, it's like <clears throat> we all have passions, things we enjoy in this world, you know, things we enjoy doing. I like making videos. I like making music, art, you know, things like that. Everybody's got something different. Right. But at the end of the day, when I pray, you know what I'm saying? 
and when I'm connected, you know what I'm saying? For me, it's God's will. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I don't care about none of this stuff, man. Like the cars, the money, blah, 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 the lights, the camera, like all this stuff is dope. It's awesome. I love it. It's, it's fun stuff here on earth. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, may God's will be done. So if this is in God's will for all of this to go away and for me to be working up at the 7-Eleven, Maybe I'm supposed to reach somebody at that 7-Eleven, man. Maybe I, I get that job at the 7-Eleven. All of a sudden, I'm reaching souls, you know what I'm saying? Or I'm, I come across paths with the right individual that takes me to a different level in life to do other things somewhere else in the world. So at the end of the day, we don't know what we want. So you can't pray for what you want as in like certain um uh, is in like certain things of, of like our mission of our of our purpose of our career of our lives on this on this earth. You know what I'm saying? We have to allow God's will to just be done over it. You know what I'm saying? Allow God's will. To, you ever heard the saying, let go? You know what I'm saying? Let go of the will. Let Jesus take the will. It's the same thing. Let go. Let make God's will be done. Focus on me. So um, Jesus, he's humbled me in a good way to where I'm very satisfied of everything in life. You know, I can mm -hmm. get one slice of pizza now and be good. You know, I can drive a regular That's car real. and be good though and be I feel you there. I'm, I'm, I've been on that road. I know, I know what Would you, you mean with that. Would you say you found your purpose then? Yeah. I don't, I still don't know what my purpose is yet, but I can say I found Jesus and this is what I wanted to tell y'all. You know, I won't be doing no more gold digger pranks. I know y'all gonna be like, you said this before. I said this twice. This is my third time. I'm serious. I'm committing my life to Jesus. I'll be switching my content and I, I, I want to find my purpose as I go. Now, if y'all see on the other video I reacted to, my man Joel actually showed up. I guess he watched the video. I hope he watched the whole video. I don't know. But he actually showed up on the other video testimony I posted. And he commented and said that he might end up, you know, going with the idea that I said about still doing the gold digger videos. But instead of, you know, slutting out the women, actually help lead them to God. You know what I'm saying? Pull out that scripture. You know what I'm saying? Get them in the car. And as soon as you get in the car... Scripture, Matthew 5, you know what I'm saying? Get into the word, see how they react, you know, have some fun with it, but shine light on the word, shine light on the gospel, you know what I'm saying? And if he ends up doing that, you know, I think that'd be dope, man. Hopefully, I could partake in that journey with him. Comment below, somebody let him know, let Joel know that I'm trying to work with him, you know what I'm saying? But if that's his mission, man, I'm proud of him. I hope that's what he ends up doing, man. Because at the end of the day, even though Gold Digger Pranks got a lot of acting involved, those are still real women out there who really are like that. And there's women to be cat caught, and you could slap them with that Bible. Go along. Because I still don't know my purpose. and But I know my purpose is to use this platform to save other creators and other Amen. people. Because it's other creators that's probably going through what I'm going through and they feel like people are going to judge them. Oh, you fell off or, Oh, you, um, you don't have money no more. Oh, you only doing this because Warren left you. you like, you know, with the devil teams, you know, the devil, like the right. stuff in your head. The devil going to try so to say everything and knock them off. Yep. A lot of people that's true. to turn to Jesus and you don't have to just do it yourself. You know? Wow. That's so powerful. Especially being from what you were doing and, and, and a lot of people following you, following every content that you do. A lot of creators also wanting to do what you're doing now. And now you're converting it and, and now you're painting, showing them this message, the message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I feel like it will be a lot of, it will impact a lot of people in a way. Oh, most definitely because like I'm not ashamed. At first I used to be ashamed. I always had these thoughts. God has been actually talking to me for like two years. But I used to always say, I teach a course. How can I talk about making 60 to 200,000 a month and lose everything? Nobody, they gonna look at me like I'm a fraud. So I was trapped, <laughs> I was a slave. That's fun, I forgot about that course, man. I actually got that course, uh, I think it was like a $15 course he had a while back. It was a, it was basically like an algorithm course, which was really good, useful information in it um, some years ago. So shout out, shout out for that, man. That's crazy. I feel all about that. Slave to money. I, 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 God has literally been talking to me for a while. I would, I, I would, I was been falling off for the longest, but I would find something else new to make money, and I kept running from God. So it really took my dad to die. It took really when I lost the material stuff. I was still prideful, 
to still do stuff my way. It really took for Lauren to leave me because I realized how much I did love her and I wanted that family and my yeah. kids. And it took for my dad to die to really snap me out and be like, family is more important and serving Jesus is more important than anything out there. Anything Amen. than having a name, being famous. I surrendered everything to God. And it was like, look, I don't care no more. I don't I don't care to what people are gonna think about me. I don't care about followers. I wanna serve Jesus and I wanna bring Jesus to the light. Use my platform to serve Jesus, to serve God. So that's everything to me now. Wow. Go. wow. You know, your your testimony is that's such go, encouraging, yeah. you know. Having everything and now you're at the bottom, lost everything, you know. Okay. Yeah, so I was making you gotta think, I'm a kid from Detroit. I could put screenshots on it. My boy put the numbers up. Now, I don't think he ever really put the numbers up. Well, no, I take that back. He definitely put the numbers up on his channel. Dude be making bank, man. It's crazy. 2022 made 1.1 million. Uh, 2021. My boy, my boy, my boy getting that bank. I was two years in a row. I spent 1.1 million dollars. So that means I made over 5 million in one year and then the next year i probably made over six or probably made three so to get that stripped down that was very very not normal like it was literally like the story of joe i lost, I lost. the story of joe and this look at his face this is where it comes down to man i've been through the same thing bro the same thing when i was in my early 20s I was making good money, you know what I'm saying? Five to seven thousand dollars a month, you know what I'm saying? I was making good money, life was good, living all right, you know what I'm saying? Then I had my motorcycle accident, broke my leg, lost all the, all my my income because I left the job, you know what I'm saying? And then been hustling, and I've been on my uh, book of book of Joe journey since uh, since then, since 2015 to now, bro. So I know how you feel, man. It's a long journey. But amongst this journey, God has humbled me in mind-blowing ways. I'm so grateful to have lost it and not have had it all still when I was in my early 20s. Because just like Joe, I was sleeping around and blowing money and like just wasting money, just lost. You know what I'm saying? Lost. And it, glory to God, I didn't end up catching AIDS or catching something you know fierce that would be stuck with me to life. You know what I mean? And that was one of the reasons what, that really pushed me to become a celibate is that when I do find a wife, I don't want to have diseases and herpes and HPV and all this crap. And I got to explain to this woman why I got all this stuff. Women ain't trying to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Women can do that. Men will have sex with almost anything. So women can, you know what I mean, go down, have uh, HPV and, and herpes and different things and men still going to date them, still going to do whatever. But women... Women ain't trying to hear that crap, man. As soon as you open up your mouth, you got to date a woman for months, get her to love you or something before you can tell her. You know what I'm saying? Which is crazy. Don't I don't recommend you doing that. But if you being honest, when you trying to tell someone on the first date, hey, no, nah, she ain't trying to hear that, man. She she is out of there. Pew, finito. Everything. I had supercars lined up. Mm. Two, I had two Lambos, two C8s, GTR. Um, only car I didn't have is because I didn't want it. It was a Ferrari. So if I didn't want the car, I didn't buy it. I had every car I had. Any car, y'all know that. Y'all y'all know my channel. You know, y'all y'all know the videos. Every car that I owned that was in my gold. The place, goat. Y'all. The goat. Y'all. Yeah. So what is humility looks like to you now? Okay. Humility is just submitting myself to God and what He wants for my life, and not what I want for my life. Ooh. That's, that's 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 why I don't even be flexing, y'all. Like I said, like right now, man, I'm in a bando, man. I live, I'm in a in a in a a gutted house in the hood of Detroit right now, making this content for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta humble yourself, the humility. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. I can tell y'all that. I'm not. I don't care what y'all think about that. You know what I'm saying? This is my journey. You know what I'm saying? I'm in tune with God. That's what matters. That's humility to me. It ain't. Well, God, I love basketball, so I want my ministry to be about basketball. It's really whatever God wants me to do that I'm gonna submit to His will. Mm -hmm. Amen. May His May His will be done. Let's go. For someone that is watching you now, um, what message would you give them? <laughs> Don't 
don't be a slave to money. If you're watching me, this for the creators too. Don't be a slave to money because family is everything, man. You know, God got a better path for you. You know, I, like I said, I'm still coasting on this journey. And it ain't even about the money no more. God like real quick, he, like he said, don't be a slave to money. You know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. You know what I mean? The love of money. Not having money. It's okay. Money is a great thing. Money is a beautiful tool. It connects the world. It helps us operate. Money is an amazing thing. But the love of money is where things take a spin. That's that's where you don't want to. You don't want to be loving money, putting putting money before you know what's righteous. You understand know what what is what is of God. You never want to put money of what is of God because as soon as you do that, you're saying that you love money more, which is evil. So me with money that's good but don't be a slave to money because that'll lead you astray that'll make you to a cheater you know i i didn't really want to be a cheater it was because i felt lonely deep down inside and lauren couldn't fill that void it was only jesus that could fill that void that i needed so i looked for that in a woman oh now i feel like mm. i'm the man and now people geeking me up you the man i'm the man okay yep. i feel accepted you know that's what money a lot of people do addiction. A lot of people, especially coming from broken homes and from the black community, I was raised by a single mother myself, but a lot of people who come from that, and primarily you see this in the black community, you know what I'm saying? They look for that love in a woman, you know what I'm saying? So they end up getting lost within a woman, you know what I'm saying? And the more you get lost into a woman and you start to serve this woman and treat this woman as this, this God, that's what she becomes. She becomes your God, you know what I'm saying? And that's the ultimate unbalance of everything because you should be putting God first. You know what I'm saying? Not the woman first. You know what I'm saying? You put God first, then you can create the proper balance and enlightenment to pass on to the woman. You know what I'm saying? You put the woman first, then it just tears both of y'all from God and the whole family ends up jacked up. You know, like I said, I was seeking validation. So now I cheated on Lauren. I needed something to cover that shame. Yeah. So now... I'm playing sports. I never smoked. I wasn't even a big drinker. Now I'm doing edibles. And I'm telling myself, believing what the devil telling me that, well, at least you ain't smoking. You good. That's you just mm. chewing and you're feeling good. So now I'm addicted to drugs. And then now that opens the now, I'm addicted to drugs. Addictions. And y'all seen all the videos online. I was really a big cheater. I couldn't get out of that. It was like I was it was so bad I couldn't get out of it. So you felt like mm. something was pushing you to cheat? Definitely, I was oppressed. Definitely. And I would literally be like, well, they calling me a cheater. I might as well keep cheating. So yeah. it was kind of like I gave up and then I feel more shame. I would look at Lauren and I would be like, this ain't the life I want. Yeah. I'm hurting somebody I love. Yeah. So I would tell the people, chase Jesus because that's your only true happiness. Because if you don't chase Jesus, you're going to be a slave to social media, you're going to be a slave to money. You're going to be a slave to something and it's going to creep in as deception first and then it's going to spread and hit you. And that's how it works. That's how it creeped in my life. It was one girl that gave me attention to lead to, I want a better girl. I want a better girl. Yeah. I want a better girl. So for the people that's watching, creators, children, or even people that's older, you know, seek Jesus for anything in your life. That's what all I can say. Wow. Would you encourage someone for deliverance? Maybe that need deliverance to reach out. Most definitely, I encourage somebody for deliverance. When you get delivered, it's like you're getting demons that's been oppressing you, drinking, um, rejection, and like right now, I feel so much joy. Yeah. You know, like I'm facing a divorce right now, and I'm not even worried about a divorce right now because, and I'm not even worried about my dad. I'm like my dad is in heaven. Like just having getting delivered. See. Now, there's some off things like Joe be saying, and this is where I'm interested with the church that he's going to. This is why I want to link with you, Joe, because you got to be around the right Christians. You know what I'm saying? And the whole deliverance thing, I guess that goes back to the whole part with him shaking on the ground, getting those demons removed. I'm still not fully there with that. I'm not. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know. Like I said, y'all comment below. Let me know how y'all feel about that whole thing. Um. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I can talk freely to people and there's other people that's out there that can relate to me, but now I'm not ashamed of what they're gonna think about me because 
I'm like, I know everybody goes through that and there's demons out there that's making people keep that bottle in. That's why suicide rate is so high. And let me tell you, I was suicidal. You know, I was suicidal. I'm like, I don't want to be alive no more because I'm so scared of what people want to think about me. Because really being famous is even the worst because I have so much people looking at me yeah. and judging me. So it's kind of like, what are them people going to say? What are my peers are going to say? Dang, Joel, you fell off. Ha <laughs> ha, laugh at me. But not, it's like, I don't care no more. Because deliverance freed me from that. Jesus yeah. freed me from that. Amen. Amen. Wow. Real quick to tap on that. That's kind of similar like with my situation. When I started stepping for Christ and moving in a more righteous manner, I lost a lot of my clients, a lot of people, close friends, you know what I'm saying? A lot of business partners, clients. I lost a lot, a lot of all of that stuff. And at the end of the day, I was like, hey, man, you know, some people is even telling me, hey, if you keep supporting that, it's going to mess your business up. You're going to lose clients and da, 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 da. But in reality, what happened was I kept pushing forward, kept moving forward. I ended up meeting new clients. I ended up meeting Christian clients. I ended up meeting clients that's moving for God. You know what I mean? People who are living better lives overall. And, you know, better clients. You know what I'm saying? Now, some of the clients I work with now, they don't want to lowball me. As much as like some of the other clients I had before I was stepping for God, you know, you got people try to lowball you left and right. But now, you know, I got clients who respect the pay and, and things like that. So even though it was tough as things deleted out of my life, you know what I'm saying? It was a transition point there, right? By the end of it, it's all worth it because God is going to put the right people who needs to be around you. God is going to put you in the right rooms, the right situations that you're meant to be in at those times. Like I said, allow God's will to be done. Wow. You know, it's crazy that a lot of young people are running after things, right? That is temporary. And you did say something earlier about I don't really know my purpose. I believe you found your purpose. Um, mm, spreading mm. the good news, telling people about Jesus and and being bold and unashamed to tell them that, hey, you know, this is how I was living and this is what I'm deciding to do now. Let go of everything and serve Jesus. So that was just so powerful. And I know that someone out there that is watching, that is listening, will be blessed by this. Oh, that's definitely what I'm doing it for, too. I won't, I, I'm, I'm not even doing this to... For not for my glory, it's literally for God's glory, and um, it's that's all it's about. It's about God, you know. It's about doing God's will, you know. I don't want this to be for followers. I don't want this to be for likes. This is literally me talking to my followers because I haven't uploaded in two months. And let y'all know, I'm not quitting uploading. I'm just going to be on here talking about Jesus. You know, it's still going to be entertaining. You know, y'all know me. I'm not boring, but it's going to. Not going to be no more secular stuff because that stuff is bad, bro. You know, it's just very bad. I made millions of dollars destroying women. Wow. You know, think about that. I made millions of dollars destroying women. Every woman is not like that, you know? Wow. So God is using me. Now I want to uplift women, you know? Yeah. So do you do you see women now in a different view? Oh, most, most, most definitely. Most definitely. You know, most definitely. Um, I look at them as, let's say, if they are gold diggers, they're only gold diggers because of the demons oppressing them and what they was taught or strongholds, you know? Yeah, so I true. don't look at it as she's using you. She's hurt, you know, and she needs help. Oh, she yeah, definitely. Help. So I definitely look. I agree with you on that, Joe. I was wondering where you was about to go with that for a minute. But yeah, I agree with you on that, man. Most definitely. I see that in everybody. You know, you see the pain. When you have that discernment and God blesses you, you got the Holy Spirit, you could definitely see that the pain in, in all different types of people you speak to. You can see the that evilness that just lays over them that they can't help. You know what I mean? That that you couldn't once help. You know, the same way you couldn't help it, you know, they're going through it and they can't help it. You know what I mean? It's just something people gotta go through. So I feel you. They look at a woman in a different light. Her past boyfriend or her dad wasn't in her life, or a lot of stuff that I went through, and she probably went down that road to sexual sin or immorality, you know? So I look at girls very much different because now that I've been alone, and that's the best thing to do, like God strip you down and actually be alone and you looking from the outside, you need women. You need a strong woman, you know, a strong wife and to love on her and actually be unity, you know, be unity. When you in unity, y'all praising God together, and it's like, can't nothing break y'all, you know? Like, yeah. if I start sinning, I can have my wife help me like, hey, read this scripture, you know? 
Yeah. So, so would you say that uh, you struggled a lot with being accepted, uh, struggling with rejection and any of those things? Most, most definitely. Uh, my dad left my life when uh, I mean he didn't leave my life. No, he did leave my life. My dad left my life when I was uh, eight years old. My mom and dad got a divorce. I would say my mom was working a lot, so the streets raised me. The streets of Detroit raised me. Hold on. It was only me, my. I would say my mom was working a lot, so he didn't leave my life. No, he did leave my life. Struggling with rejection and any of those things. Most, most definitely. Uh, my dad left my life when uh, I mean he didn't leave my life. No, he did leave my life. My dad left my life. When I was uh, eight years old, my mom and dad got a divorce. I would say my mom was working a lot. See, I don't like the t I don't like the terminology there. My dad left my life. I don't, you know, what I'm saying I don't know their situation, but nine times out of ten, men love their men actually have the ability to have true love, the love of God passed to the kids. You know what I'm saying? It's a natural state within the man to have true love when they love, whereas women will have that emotional, worldly love. You know what I'm saying? That 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 motherly love that can end up harming the children so it's natural that men naturally love their kids you know what i'm saying so the way he's wording it, like my dad left at eight nine times out of ten your dad left your your mom you know what i'm saying like i wouldn't even have the, the mindset that he left you because i'm sure if he had the choice to be with his son and, and raise his son he, he would choose that you know what I mean? But either he was going through something in life either financially whatever the case may have been they ended up getting divorced or whatever the case was but you know, they ended up having to go separate ways so because their relationship didn't work out. So he was leaving your mom and you were just a casualty along with that, man. So I hope that's how you see it, too, and not like holding it against your father like like he purposely left you, you know, because in reality, you know, men, we don't leave our kids. You know what I'm saying? We leave the women. We leave these crazy women. But the kids, they just in the mix. You know what I mean? So the streets raised me. The streets of Detroit raised me. It was only me, my sister, and my older brother in the house. But my older brother had a, 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 a slow problem, so he wasn't really there. He's kind of like autism. So he wasn't there to teach me. That was my oldest brother. And my sister, we she's one year older than me, so I didn't literally hang out with her, you know? My, I didn't hang out with her, so I would always be in the streets. And I don't blame my mom because my mom was just working to provide for us, pay rent. So she would literally go to sleep, and the streets raised me. And just me going to basketball games, and I did everything by myself, every single thing by myself. Nobody was there to support me, you know. And I used to tell myself I was good. I didn't think about it, but over the time, all that pain, I started womanizing girls, and I started doing rebellious things, and that definitely impacted my life. I, I would say that impacted my life a lot. Wow. You know, from the day you came to now, I can definitely see a difference. Uh, from even the way you speak, uh, from just every time you, you just have this joy in you, yeah. and you're smiling, and, and you're no longer <laughs> that's sad. The same and, thing, uh, that's the I, same thing people say about me, man. When they see me, they be like, and I'll be going through it. I'll be going through some tough situations. You know what I mean? Some low points. You know what I mean? And people, but my energy, like I'm all, I'm just good because I know God got it. You know what I mean? Like I'm not tripping over it. It's just like, it's just what the circumstances is right now. You know what I mean? And other people, they'll see it. They can see that light. They can see that energy within me. And they're like, man, wow, like you just really seem like, you know, at peace with it. I'm, I'm like, yeah, bro. Like God unlocks yeah, the, the, the level of peace, perfect peace in your heart that God uh, unlocks within you is it's ineffable ineffable undescribable with words y'all it is it is it's mind-blowing and this is coming mind you i used to be an atheist i used to be agnostic you know what i'm saying it took me years before i got to the point of truly believing in god i had to call you a few times just to minister to you and encourage you now it's just man you're filled with so much joy and i know exactly uh, how you feel because i was once there too and only jesus can really offer that no, nah, yes, Jesus can only offer that for real. And that goes back to the last question you answered. I was definitely dealing with rejection. I was dealing with rejection, so it made me seek validation all the time. I had to buy a car to get praise. And it was weird because I didn't I was humble naturally, so I didn't like people giving me compliments, but also I needed that. You know what I'm saying? So I needed that 
self-seeking validation. So mine was different. I don't like people praising me, but me accomplishing that goal was building my own product because I didn't get that growing up, you know? So me accomplishing two Lambos, at least I knew I accomplished that. I was good, you know? Some people don't have their dad in their life and they need more people to praise them and they're like, yeah, I'm the man. I didn't like that. I just needed validation within myself. I needed to look the best in the room 24 seven so that way I can feel good about myself because I was rejected growing up. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing this powerful testimony. And, and I hope for the followers, those that are watching that, you know, that they see you, not the old you, but they see you, the new you, and they're able to appreciate what God is doing in your life and in this new journey. Mm. Almost definitely. I'm not ashamed anymore. I'm not ashamed. Um, like I said, I got some lit content coming out for Christ. Um, it's not going to be boring, you know, and it's going to be actually teaching y'all, man. Like, it's going to be teaching y'all about Jesus. It's going to be me praying and ministering to people, some that I'm still going, you know, I'm new to this. So, you know, and, uh, all right, thank we all God gotta, for, we all gotta you know, grow. my spiritual brothers. Now I got spiritual brothers that actually can have somebody with me to help me on this journey because, you know, being a Christian is very hard, man. You get tempted a lot, you know, and especially for me, the whole world is saying what I'm doing. The whole world is, you know, y'all might call me crazy. Yeah, Joel, crazy. You know, he giving up all. Yeah. I ain't giving up anything. I'm just serving God. You know. Mm. You know I've been down this road, Joel, bro. I think you're crazy. <laughs> um, I've been down this road. They thought crazy. Jesus was crazy. You know, uh, they called him names and stuff like that because of the things that he would do. You know, uh, and so walking with God is it's a walk that you have to be unashamed. You know, because mm -hmm. people are gonna have label. People are gonna say what they want to say, but you know your conviction, you know what God has done in your life. And so it doesn't matter what people say, it matters what he says. Amen. Most definitely, most definitely. I'm ready for the journey, y'all. So like if we hit a million subscribers, it's time to hit two million subscribers. But now let's get people for the, the kingdom of God, man. Let's do that. Let's reach millions of people. Let's, I'm looking to change y'all lives, you know, and bring y'all closer to God, man. Because truth be told, even y'all watching the screen, y'all know deep down inside, y'all going through something if y'all don't have Christ. Y'all are just like me. Y'all mm -hmm. might just not have a lot of money or influence, but deep down inside, you're loaning for something. I used to loan every day. What is it? Bought a new car, mm -hmm. happy for one week. Why am I back depressed to the point to where my wife can't make me happy? Then I got to go somewhere else to get happiness. Or I got to yes. drink, and I don't even like drinking. Or I got to put a pop of edible. Why is it that? So that's why not only am I on the journey, but you guys are on the journey with me. We on the journey together, man. I told y'all, just like we was on the road to a million subscribers, hey. we on the road to Jesus Christ. Man. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, let's go. Come on, boy, you, Joe, man. Where, come where on, where Joel. Let's videos, go. I want you to pray. Pray for someone that's watching you live. Just pray for them. Uh, declare God's blessing over there, them and whoever is going through some stuff right now. And just speak God's word over them as they're watching. Wow, I never thought I'd be doing this, but let's do it. Dear Heavenly Father, to all those that's watching, I want to pray over their life that they uh, seek you and seek you with a full heart because there's nothing out there but lies, deceptions, pain, guilt, all the things that's wrong. You know, we have a sim simple nature naturally. So, Lord, I want everybody in this video that's watching to be mm. touched by this testimony so that way they could just chase you because mm. you is all we need you know yes and lord mighty jesus name amen mm. amen thank y'all for watching like subscribe comment. man you can just see the joy on joel's face the genuineness in his heart you know you know he could possibly still be you know obviously battling his demons you know but you can see the growth. You can see the joy that he that's come, you know, into his spirit after this journey. So, you know, I believe him. It seems like he's on a more uh, serious journey, even compared to when Boom Gang, uh, John Gabbana, when he first came out with his testimony story and everything. Um, Joel seems way more serious and genuine. Um, it's just interesting that the select few, the people who are turning back to Christ. You know what I mean? It's really interesting to see uh, the different celebrity figures of people who are like just going all out for Christ now and taking and being bold with that, especially given over the past five, six years we've seen in America 
where Christians were just really being hated, you know. So this is amazing, man. I'm glad I could go through this uh, this testimony part two testimony segment of Joel at his church, man. You guys go and comment down below, man. Let me know. Give me a little bit, a taste of y'all testimony in the comments. And I would love to, you know, read, read some of them and respond to them if I can. But uh, I love you all, man. Love you, Joel. God bless to everybody. Hit that notification bell. Let's get it. Let's go. God gang. God gang. Ain't nobody really flipping. Icebergs say you know that we be tipping. They only want the money, so you better not be succinctin'. You know I got the game, I be on my Scotty Pippin'. Turn like I'm praising in the church. I keep the birds chirping, keep it shuffle on the perch. Could call me Kanye 